3D echocardiography is an innovative and fascinating ultrasound technique that allows the comprehensive assessment of the cardiac structure, morphology and function. Bernard Cousins will present how to perform a 3D echocardiography with the different modalities and he will also highlight the main tips, tricks and pitfalls. 3D echocardiography is one of the major innovations in the field of cardiac ultrasound. It allows to acquire and to analyze every structure from every point of view. For that, of course, we need a specific probe. And this is the probe that we will use. You can see this probe is slightly bigger than a usual probe that we use for 2D. And this may, of course, give some limitations. Because of the size, it's sometimes difficult to have a good window. Uh, of course, today we have, we have a strong guy, but if you have a little patient, sometimes you may have some, some difficulties to have a good window because of a small uh, intercostal space and you cannot avoid some rip artifact. Uh, moreover, the probe is quite heavy, so for a doctor like me with a fragile wrist, it might be, of course, sometimes a little bit difficult to make a complete examination with this, this probe. The main trade-off, so if we begin to insonify this patient, the main trade-off of uh, 3D uh, echo is, of course, to deal with uh, the uh, uh, temporal resolution and the spatial resolution. So it's difficult to acquire a complete data set And if you look here, we have a good trade-off between the spatial and temporal resolution. If we go to the frame rate, I will try to show you that the frame rate here on the screen is around 13 frames per second. But if we now try to decrease for example the temporal resolution with a frame rate around 6.5 you see that the number of frames per volume is really decreased here. On the other way around, if we increase the frame rate, we lose a lot of details regarding the image and we lose a lot of spatial resolution. So this is the main problem with a 3D. We have to find a trade-off between these two components. And using the best compromise, we can get such very nice images. Here we have a full volume acquisition. But to, that, to, do, to obtain such a high frame rate, what we have to do, in fact, is to use mil multiple, multiple acquisition based on a triggering on the EKG. And for that, we also need to have the collaboration of the patient and, yes, to breath hold during the acquisition. I will try to illustrate the importance of these uh, parameters. So here we have an online acquisition. And you, as you can see, to have this very good image, we have to acquire four different volumes during four different cardiac cycles. It means that the patient should not move. It's really tough if the patient has some arrhythmia, which is not the case here. And then you can obtain such a good image. But now we will ask to the patient to breathe deeply. And I will show you the results. If you do not ask the patient to have some breath hold, you have a lot of stitching artifacts because we are using, in fact, different volumes. And it's clear from this image that it's very difficult to interpret such an image, which is of very poor quality. And it's much more obvious if we move to the, 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 the different views, transversal views, you can clearly see these lines of stitching which compromise the interpretation of the image. Another important clue is, of course, to have the appropriate gain. If we use an overgaining, we lose in the resolution and also we lose the 3D perspectives that we can get with this uh, modality. 
The other way around, we can also undergain the image. And this is quite dangerous because it means that we can have some kind of drop up. I will show you what we can have as problem here. So here you can see that we have some kind of drop out at the level of the left ventricle. When I increase the gain, this dropout will disappear. So you have to choose the appropriate gain setting. Not too high, not too low. Another example, maybe it will be more obvious here. I hope you can see it at the level of the arrow that one part of the ventricle is disappearing. And of course, it's very important if you want to assess, for example, an interventricular communication, not to create just by decreasing the gain. So usually we use only focus examination on top of 2D. It's very difficult to have a complete 3D examination. And you can focus on first on the left ventricle. And as you know, we can use different modalities with 3D. This is the multiplane modalities, meaning that we can acquire three different orthogonal planes at the same time without moving the probe. It's really, really practical if you intend, for example, to perform some stress echo, meaning that you do not have to change the probe of position and you can acquire simultaneously these three different planes. You can also use the full volume acquisition, as I told you, and I showed you some example before. And once you have acquired these images, you can manipulate them as you wish. Have the different projection, you can make it turn. So you can even offline manipulate these full volume as you wish to look at the structures that you want to see. It's also important to say that using this full volume acquisition, we can also acquire the different orthogonal planes and putting some samples at the level of the base and the apex of the left ventricle, we can automatically or semi-automatically measure the ejection fraction. This is of course a very robust tool since it's semi-automated and there is no problem of foreshortening that we can have with 2D because there is no geometrical assumption, which is, of course, uh, the guarantee of a better reproducibility and accuracy in the measurements. Of course, this is also a very useful tool that we can use from the same data set. We can also measure the mass. Uh, and of course, this is much more appropriate than just measuring two walls. If you have, for example, a huge hypertrophy at the epical level, you will miss it just measuring in B mode or in M mode. So this will give you automatically the mass and is of course also of added value compared to 2D and it's much more reproducible and compare very well with cardiac magnetic resonance, which is the, the, the gold standard actually. Now we can focus also on the valves. And we will begin with the mitral valve. And what we use frequently, especially if we want to assess mitral stenosis, is the biplane. Why? Because you can be sure that having the two planes at the same time, you can align perfectly your beam to measure the area of the uh, valvular orifice and you can adjust online to be sure that you're really at the tip of the leaflet, so avoiding also some kind of foreshortening, foreshortening at the level of the valve. And this will increase the accuracy of your measurements. This has been shown many times and in a lot of publication. You can also use a different modality, which is the 3D full volume modality. This also will give such 
view acquired in full volume. This is the typical unfast view, but you can also move your cursor and look at different levels to assess, for example, the mechanism of a mitral organic regurgitation or primary regurgitation is more appropriate. But you can also, just by using the functionalities, look at the level of, for example, the atria. And you can rotate, zoom on this view, and then you will obtain what is called a surgical view. And in this surgical view, you can clearly look at the interrelation between the aortic valve and the mitral valve and also assess the coaptation of the different scallops of the mitral leaflet. Then we will move to another valve which is also of great interest which is the aortic valve. Just to let you know this patient here was supposed to have a bicuspid valve during a previous examination in two-dimensional echo. And now we will move to the 3D acquisition. And once again, it's very important to see that we have a very good definition since we asked the patient to uh, have a good breath hold and also to have a good acquisition. And the main advantage is that we can have a view, as it's the case here, from the left ventricle and just by cropping the image, so translating the image from here to here, we can also have the view from the aorta. So the main interest in, in that, that perspective and in this setting is that we can, for example, evaluate a patient with a high gradient, with an apparently normal aortic valve, but with a subalveolar membrane. So you can evaluate the area of the orifice at that level related to the presence of this subalveolar membrane. So doing a complete examination with a full acquisition, you will also have the possibility to have directly all the cropping planes. So you have the coronal views, transversal views and sagittal views in the same data set. And if you are a fan of this functionality, you can even use some cropping box and really look at the structures that are of interest for you. Now, saying that, we can move to another functionality, which is the possibility to use 3D even with color Doppler. And of course, this is of great interest if we want to look at, for example, flow at the level of communication, but also at the level of the mitral valve, of aortic valve, for a better location of the conversion zone, and as you will see uh, in the future presentation, this is also of importance to have a better quantitative assessment of mitral regurgitation or stenosis. But this is not the aim of this examination, just to show you that it's also very important to uh, ask to the patient to make a good breath hold during the acquisition, otherwise you will have also some problem of stitching artifacts. And this is even more obvious in this multiple transversal view. You can see that here the flow seems not to be moving when you have some kind of flow there. And this is typically what we can get when you don't ask to the patient to have a appropriate breath out. The same in another projection. And finally, what we can also do uh, with these uh, with this uh, uh, nice technology is to measure uh, rapidly the 4D strain. And this allows a comprehensive and quantitative assessment of the uh, function in a more subtle way. And this is some kind of images that we can get using this functionality. 
and you have the different projection, so the strain is automatically uh, analyzed and detected, and you will receive a very nice overview of all the, um, the measurements at the same time. You have here, for example, uh, the image of a global longitudinal strain. As you can see, you have at some places uh, some kind of X, which is related to uh, segments where it was difficult to analyze the uh, longitudinal strain at that level. And this is automatically done by the machine when the drift is uh, minus or plus or minus 12 and then it's, uh, it's detected as an abnormal uh, measurements and it will not be taken into account in the final, uh, the final calculation. So as you can see, 3D Echo offers a lot of new functionalities, a lot of advantages. Nevertheless, you have to keep in mind that there are some tricks and tips that you have to apply in order to have good quality imaging. So three main messages can be drawn from these examinations. First, find the best compromise between the temporal and the spatial resolutions depending on what you would like to see. Secondly, avoid over gain or under gains to minimize the artifacts. And finally, do your acquisitions during a quiet respirations or breath hold to avoid the stitching artifacts.